Hey everyone, Paul Daniels here and another nightly fix. Um, yet again, it seems like we're just having a run of these. Got ourselves another A1466. And um, like I said, I'm not complaining. I love these things. They've got the, pretty much the biggest chance of being repaired. Maybe next to like the A1278s. Great machine to work on. Really nice to have in the workshop. So it's uh, blooming hot here again, as always. Actually, outside isn't too bad. It's uh, probably dropping down about mid-20s, and it's nice and cool for a change. But inside, because as you can see, the brick walls and everything, there's a lot of latent heat, heat in the walls, so it's going to take a few days before that drains out. We hit around about 40 today, so it's going to be another long night of uh, capitalizing on the cool weather. So I'm going to be doing a fair bit of repairing tonight. Anyway, uh, this one comes in, and it's... Uh, no color on the no light on the mag safe from a power up be interesting to see what's going on if we're lucky it's maybe just something wrong with 3v42 or a short or something like that i guess the best way to find out is to open it up have a look so let's get to it okay look pop it open i'm going to kill the audio quality a little bit here got to put the extractor on With the extractor on, I get a little bit of airflow around the workshop, and that's just enough to take the edge off the heat. What would be nice is if I actually had a inside uh, a blower that would take outside air and bring it into the house because it's quite cool outside. But we don't have one. All right, we've got ourselves an A203437, which is the more durable of the two A1466 boards. The 165 has a, its own little quirks. Uh, nothing majorly obvious that I could see straight off. There's a little bit of discoloration around here, but sometimes it's just the wash. So I guess we'll have a look under the microscope. Uh, microscope auto switcher doing its job. Love it. Alrighty. bit of dust yeah a little bit of corrosion but not bad on the JTAG but it would tend to indicate something's come through and oh, there we go yep that probably would be enough to kill it we also have a bit of a build up there I think what we'll do is we'll take this out as with the usual scenario to get sort of corrosion around here it's probably best to look on the other side just in case there's something else and we've got our glitter as always always glitter okay we'll take it out and have a look I am looking at getting some better lighting for this workshop I was going through eBay at the moment or tonight trying to find something that will do the job I've got to think about what I've got in this area like there are certain limitations of what I can do given the setup I may have to just redo the workshop yet again sometimes you just keep doing things until you butt up against a problem you can't get past and then you have to just roll back and start again from scratch some new design now it could be argued that I should have just repaired that one area and then only bothered to check things if things still didn't work but I figure the extra time put into inspecting the other side of the board before going ahead with anything is probably worth it certainly it makes it easier to yeah you can feel comfortable about the job you've done so far it does look perfectly clear but like I said it, it's an extra five minutes of work but it gives you that sense of confidence and not everyone needs to have that but I'm one of those sort of people that prefers to have that
that sticker gives me cause for concern. I'm not sure. I don't really see them all the time, so I'm not sure why that's there. It's not the usual 639 sticker. Alright, well, we'll take the Wi-Fi module off, just in case something blew in under, even though there isn't really anything underneath the Wi-Fi. It doesn't hurt to check. Alright, looking good. Okay, well... These caps here are definitely 3G42. I imagine these are too. They're just the input stage decoupling, I think. Have a look on the Borvian schematic. That there looks burnt, so... Yeah. Probably a good chance it's not working. I don't know what resistance is. Five point one one. Well, that's within range. What about this? This should be ten-ish. Okay, eight. Yep. Uh, I'm going to replace that anyway because of that discoloration. And then, so I'd say these are probably shorted. Oof. It's not a guarantee, but I wouldn't be surprised. No short. Yeah, they're not shorted. No, right. You guessed wrong, Paul. You guessed wrong. Alright, let's get rid of this stuff. That's a concern. See, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but that area there just lifted up. It just... Yeah, that smells familiar. By the way, that cap's... Yeah, oh, look at that. That's... I'm very dead cap. We might have to just blanket windshield wiper this stuff. So I want to get rid of this 4.7 4 ohm resistor too. May as well take these two caps. Alright, coming down to here. Okay, that's all ground. That was the very corroded one, so yeah, that's the input decoupling. And the 4V7, or R7 rather, that's this one here, 706. Yeah. Alright, we'll put those back. Check there, there's that flake out there. To get rid of that corrosion. Get out the surgical knife, or rather the hobby knife, because it's not really a surgical knife. See how far this corrosion goes back. Just dry brush that off.
Oh, get ourselves a donor. Well, it looks like this one's got everything we need. So we'll just proceed to pluck them off and put them on the new one. What we should do first is prepare the surfaces there. Get down some leaded solder. So it's somewhat more welcoming. I'm not worried about the big blob. One thing I do need to check is the diode mode of that two input diode. 1.9 Yeah. I think I'm going to replace that diode as well. Mostly because if there was a short there with the caps and it drew an excessive current through the diode then it could have been damaged. And since we're already in the process of doing all this work there's no harm in doing a little more. Within reason. After all this, we'll probably find out the regulator's blown anyway. That resistor does need to be pushed down. We'll get to it. Can we do two at once? There's a little bit of an issue here. Uh, because we don't have well-defined pad on that large area that was corroded out it makes it a little tricky to get the caps to split out nicely technically I could actually leave them like this but I'm not going to do that yeah that's it that's a bit prettier. Yes. Because the caps are in parallel. They're just working together. Often what it is, <coughs> you do a bit of a decade difference. Like you'll have 0.1 microfarad and then have 1 microfarad. And then yeah, just a magnitude difference between each. And it's just so that you can respond to the different ah oh. drag it through a bit of flux 
it's so that electrically you can respond to different uh, frequencies of spikes, current demand spikes. Ah, shit. I was getting pedantic there and it cost me. Now I've got an absolute mess. Nowhere near as pretty as I wanted. Physically, I mean electrically, it's all the same. Physically, it drives me insane. Come on. Ah, I can't get the tip down on there. There we go. How dare you tombstone on me? You have to pull that one out and find out why it tombstoned. Shouldn't have. Maybe it just wants a bit more solder on that pad. Leave it alone. Just make sure there's no short between those caps. And I think we're good. Yep, we're good. That's uh, a pretty ugly mess. Hopefully it'll do the trick. What was on? Good thing there's nothing under here. We'll put the hot air on it long enough. Take the opportunity now to wash it down a bit. Notice how I'm washing it down onto the paper, not just smearing it all around. I mean, there is a bit of smearing naturally, but most of the flux is going on that paper. Alright, let's try our known working DC inboard and fan. Well, it's still a little warm, but we should at least be able to see if we get our voltages. Our MagSafe light. Here we go. Still no MagSafe. Alright. The game is afoot. I'm going to guess the regulator took a hit. Right, 0.8 volts. Not good. 0.1 volt. Wow, really are getting nothing. 0.06. We took out quite a bit here. That's quite something. 
All right, let's see if we can have a look at uh, 7010. I think that's pretty much what I'm after. I'm pretty sure this is it up here. Okay, so we've got 20 volts, 20 volts, wow, okay. 20 volts coming in. Uh, let's see. Let's go to board view and schematic. Let's see what voltage we've got on the gate. 7011. Six point seven. That should definitely be enough to open it up. Q seventy ten, where are you? You're there. Let's measure you on R seven thousand five. Because I'm an idiot and was measuring on the wrong chip before, so we've got twenty volts. Two point eight volts. Yeah, that's not really a good sign, so yeah. Two point eight volts, hardly enough. Do we have a short there? Two point nine, it's not really a short at all. Point three, it's a little low, but it could be a few things. Maybe that's a defect in there that I didn't see. Let's replace it and try. measure that and see what it is. Ideally it should be 10 ohms. And well 2k is a little high compared to 10 ohms. Oh yeah. You, know, you have to draw a milliamp or two and you drop your voltage. So we get that donor board back. How's that, eh? The one part I didn't bother replacing. I get to be fair, there's a few parts I didn't replace yet. So we'll steal this one. And I've already forgotten to put the solder down for the other, but we'll see how we go. Could have sworn that measured 10 before, but that's the trouble with measuring in circuit. I could have been measuring, well, you're measuring in parallel, so if there's anything remotely close to that, it'll drop it quite a bit. Okay, let's put some leaded solder down. Come on. Get up to temperature. Get some more flux. And we'll put our proper new 10 ohms down. Now one thing that does concern me slightly is maybe that other one was 10 ohms originally and after I fixed up everything else and applied power it caused it to go pfft. But I'm not really thinking so. But we'll soon find out. Let's have a look at what the resistance reads now. Wouldn't be surprised if it says 5 or 6. No, it says 10. Alright. Very strange.
So here we go this time. Ha! Huh, green light. Fan spin. Now let's see if we get data. Where's my USB stick? Yeah, USB stick. I just realized that stop started, stop start, which is good. And we have a blinking blue LED, so we're all good. Okay, there we go. We had another bit of luck. Uh, it was a little bit more complicated than the previous one, but only because I didn't completely wipe out everything on the board in the first place. Um, I didn't take the regulator because I thought, well, you know, if the caps had taken the short end, the damaged caps are on the input side as opposed to the output side. So it was likely that the regulator would not have been damaged, assuming they went into some sort of short uh, mode. But um, I made the slight mistake there. I made the assumption the 4 ohm 7 resistor was actually for the DC input as opposed to the battery. So a bit of mishap there. But other than that, so we've got another board up and running. So yep, another happy customer and another happy technician. So thank you all for watching. You all take care. I'll see you next time.